Hi, again, back with you. So we are on to chapter three. So let's define beingness because we talked a lot about being, the human being, in the first chapter, very briefly. Uh, but now I'm going to expand on that. So you'll get a more closer and closer concepts, ideas, feeling, thought, everything which will bring you closer to what I mean by beingness. So let's just, let's just jump into it. Okay. So what are the myths and lies? Oh, we are being told so many lies from the time we are kids. It's amazing. Anyway, so what are the myths and lies of beingness? Okay, first one, words, ideas, concepts are not your being. So people are told you lots of words, concepts, ideas, uh, things like even love, compassion, beauty. What what all is this other than a bunch of vowels and consonants? There's nothing but just words. Words don't mean anything. They are not your being. They are not the essence of your being. I want to use your feeling, intuition here when you follow me in this in this um, podcast. So. Words, ideas, and concepts are not your being. Somebody tells you a certain idea. Somebody throws in a bunch of words at you. Somebody throws in a concept at you. That is not your being. Okay? That's the first lie. Second lie. Interpretations, meanings, and opinions are not your being. Somebody has an opinion about you. Oh, you are this or you are that. Or somebody has, oh, you're doing this, meaning this means that. Or you're doing this, meaning this means that. Doesn't mean anything. It's not your being. Somebody interprets something. No, you said this to me the other day, so that means this. That is their interpretation. It's nothing to do with your being. See? Separate out the lies of beingness. Okay? Third point. <clears throat> your current education, society, history, stories, myths, belief systems are not your being. This is a big one. As you know, you're brought up with a certain education. You belong to a certain society. You belong to a certain country, areas, or whatever it is, right? History. You have to be taught history in history books. You know, this one, this was a king, this was this one, this was this race, this was that race. All that is just story. History is nothing but his story. Doesn't mean anything. Myths. You know, if this happens, that happens. All kinds of myths that every country has, really. Every country has. Belief systems, you must believe in this, you must believe in that, you must believe in this God, you must believe in that God, you must believe in this government or that particular leader, or you must believe in this education, or you must believe in this and that. Belief systems are not your being. Last one, where you are born, your class, your society, your race, your religion, have nothing to do with your being. Where you are born, it's just that you have taken a body as a being. Okay, your soul has taken a body. It's nothing to do with your being. So these are all the lies that you have been told what is beingness and this is what you have to be. This is who you are. This is your identity and all kinds of other rubbish, which I don't want to get into, but it's just rubbish. Okay, you can throw it off in the trash can. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> it doesn't mean. Okay? So what is the truth of the being? Well, here is the truth of beingness. Okay, what is beingness? You must understand that what feels right to you is a part of who your being really is. What feels inside. You listen to something, it feels good inside you or it doesn't feel good inside. It feels light or it feels heavy. You've got to always go with your inner feeling. Every thought generates an emotion. That emotion feels right to you, it is your truth. Go with your truth, for that is what your being came here for. You came here for something. Right? You want to know your purpose, why you are here, what you are here to do? Well, that's a guideline. Go with your inner feeling. If it feels light, it is for you. If it doesn't feel right, it's not for you. It may be good for someone else. This, that's perfectly fine. You may think chocolate ice cream is good, somebody else thinks vanilla is good. It's just a choice. So it's okay. But go with your truth. Your truth is what your being came here for. Right? Third one. Third one. Okay. Taking a break for getting some food. How was I? 
Um, okay, so next point. What do you feel as feel is the key word there inside you as right and wrong are the true guidance for what is real again for you? It can be um, not true for the other person. So you have to be careful in this discernment because there is a common good and there is a common bad. Always there is there. Like killing another being or killing another human is bad by itself. Everybody knows this. So there's that that falls in the realm of common good and common bad. But I'm speaking individually here. So individually, what you feel inside you is right and wrong are your true guidance to what is the real being. What you breathe as air, smell, taste, touch, all the sensory perception is real and what brings you closer to your being. Things can bring you closer to your being. That's the key to understand here. Your being is always present. You can come closer and closer and closer to it. And that will make you feel more and more towards your own internal alignment with your being. Right? <clears throat> what you translate inside you, key word is translate, and inside you, from the external world which creates certain doubts, fears, anxiety, are markers of how far you are from the real being you are. Right? If something creates doubts, fears, anxiety, panic, etc. inside you, you're pretty far from your real being. You need to start getting in alignment then, right? Mm, last, when you go beyond what you are taught, yet use it to discern carefully what is right for you and what is not, it brings you closer to your beingness. You're taught certain things by your parents, by a society. Many of the things are good. Many of the habits are good. Many of the lifestyles are good. Many of the things your elders teach you are good. Many of the things your institutions teach you are good. There's no... There's no blanket rule that says um, this is uniformly bad or this is uniformly good. But we are not talking about good and bad here. We are talking about your beingness. What is the essence of your being? And we'll get to that more in the next ones. Yes? All right. <clears throat> Coming to the next one. Remember this one in the first chapter? The sphere of human being? I'll get my glasses one second. Okay, so remember the sphere of human being? Action seeks to enhance human spirit. Human spirit always seeks to be engaged in every action. The central circle comprising this um, six parts, compassion, love, balance, knowledge, understanding and beauty, that's your being. And the uh, outer circles for other action points which you engage with the world. Right? So now let's expand on each one of these. I'm going to spend some time in expanding so that you get a sense of what the feeling we have been talking about. What's the feeling of compassion? What's the feeling of love? What's the feeling of balance? What's the feeling of knowledge, understanding and beauty? Right? <clears throat> so let's move on. How does this work? What is the processes? What must I do? Okay. Let's start with the first one, compassion. So compassion. In the sphere of human being, what does compassion and how do you use compassion to create, engage, regenerate, expand? And what, why it leads to more and more compassion, right? <clears throat> so compassion. I'm using the word feels everywhere so that you know what it feels like because feeling is where the real being is, right? Compassion feels like connection. Now what you reflect very deeply on each one of these. It cannot be told many things in words because it is your heart center. This is a heart centered consciousness. Compassion feels like unifying. You feel like unifying with the other person whom you are feeling towards. Compassion feels sacred, divine, whatever you may call it, right? Feels like sacred, very holy. Compassion feels like something bigger than you are and yet you are a part of that, right? This is the sphere of human being as it relates to compassion. And you can use compassion to create. You can use compassion to create and regenerate or expand any one of these, right? It's linked to all four of them. Each emotion, each of your being, 
nature of your being is connected to all four, right? <coughs> Things wrong with my throat today. Okay, next. So let's go to the next one. Love. Wow, this is talked about a lot, and there's a lot of misinterpretation about it. Let's clear this up. What does love feel like? Love feels like appreciation. When you love something or someone or some animal or plant or human being or, or, or your work or your art form or your whatever you're engaged in, in any one of these actions, whatever you're creating, whatever you're engaged with, whatever you're regenerating, whatever you're expanding to, if there is a love in center of that, it feels like appreciation. It feels like you belong to something or someone. It feels like expansion outward, as if your heart is going outward. It's a feeling of expansion to the outer world. It feels like peace. Love feels like peace inside. Love feels like joy at the same time. So it's peace and joy and expansion, a sense of belonging, a sense of appreciation. That's the feeling of love. Really, let it be to one human to another, or let it be towards anything, towards an action, towards creation, towards engaging with another human being or any of the life forms on the planet, anything. That's the feeling of love. Really, it comes down to these feelings. Yeah? Let's move on to the next. So, next one on the list, balance. What does balance feel like? If you say balanced human being, what does it feel like? It feels like sureness. <clears throat> I'm sure of myself, that's balance. It feels like confidence, I'm confident. It Balance feels like you're centered in your being. It's like life force energy is moving through the center of your being. It's like your spine is all alert, aware, and your brain is working at its peak potential. Your heart center is very, very well balanced. Um, <coughs> So it feels like that. You're centered in your being. Balance feels like a calm courage. Courage is often misinterpreted as you go around chest thumping and telling everybody else how you feel like, oh, I'm very courageous, I'm this and that. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with balance. If you're balanced, it feels like calm courage. It's what the um, Zen Buddhism talks of. It's like the calmness. It's like the Zen feeling. You're centered. You're calm, you're alert, and yet you're centered. That's the balance. That's because they are balanced. They are achieved the balance inside themselves. Right? Now, okay, let's move on to the next. So, next one on the list, knowledge. What does knowledge feel like? So, when you accumulate knowledge to create, expand, engage and regenerate, what does it feel like? Knowledge feels like expansion. Knowledge feels like growth. I'm growing in something. I've learned something new about the world or about the person or about the work that I'm doing or about the line that I'm involved in, art, science, painting, music, anything. It feels like growth. You learn something today. Knowledge feels like curiousness. We are all curious. As, even as a child, even as a baby, we are curious putting things in our mouths. We are always curious. Humans are always curious about things. Knowledge feels like nurturing that curiousness. Knowledge feels like sureness, like you know something, now you know better how to handle it. You put your hand on the stove, you burn it, next time you don't go and do that. So that's the knowledge accumulated about even a hot stove, right? Next on the list, understanding. What does understanding feel like? Understanding feels like connection between heart and mind. So when you learn something, accumulated some knowledge, as in the previous slide, and then you use your heart also along with it, you understand. When you, somebody is your friend is telling, or your colleague, or your, your wife, or your husband, or your lover, or anybody is telling you, I feel like this, such and such a thing is going on, and you say to the other person, really feeling it, whatever the person, you're really listening to them, and you say, I understand what you're going through. That understanding is a connection between heart and mind you have established. This understanding needs to come, and especially in a world like this today, it really needs to come in a big way. People don't understand each other very well. That needs to be there. So, understanding feels like you are an instrument of change for the good of all. 
So as if you are a part of the whole and you are contributing in the way that is very unique to you. Everybody is not the same. No two fingers are the same. So you are bringing in something that is unique, understood by you, along with whatever your being brings, but you are using it as an instrument of change for the good of all. Understanding feels like compassion with knowledge. This is what is missing big piece in the world. Everybody has a lots of knowledge and they are pompous egos running around saying I am bigger than you and I am more than you. So you, I am your master, you are my slave. That's not compassion. That's not aligned with your being. Understanding feels like compassion with knowledge. Understanding feels like connectedness with all life and planet. So that understanding is a much more, as you can feel it, it's a larger expanded understanding. I know what my relation with is with my family, with my society, my country, and then I go forward what my understanding is with my race. I know what my understanding with the other races, other peoples of other lands. I know what my understanding is with the planet and all its being. So the understanding can expand. Right? Last on the list, I think, is beauty. What does beauty feel like? And how can you create beauty, expand with beauty, engage in beauty, regenerate beauty? So what does it feel like? Beauty feels like the right place to be. When you look at a beautiful thing, whatever beauty is to you, they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, of course. Everybody's idea of beauty is different, what they feel like. And that's good. It brings variety to everything. So beauty feels like the right place to be. Beauty feels like adoration. You're adoring something. Something, someone, someone's beauty, something's beauty, some animal's beauty, plant, person, anything. Or even your work. Maybe your whatever you're creating. Remember the creation is there, right there with beauty. If you're creating an art form, creating a new kind of presentation like this, or if you're creating a new piece of music, or your scientific invention, or if you're treating your patient, or whatever it is, feels like a divine connection. Beauty feels like what you're here to create. So creation of beauty is one very big part of what humans are here for. Many philosophers have spoken about this in the past. So that brings us to your being and how it is connected to the circle of life. We always come back to the goal. What is the goal of all of the beings here? The elementals, the, the life forms, flora, fauna, the individuals, families, state, country, etc. The human being collective, the earth collect, elemental collective and the flora, fauna collective, life form collective. So, your being should support the self-sustaining cycle of all life on earth. Whatever we discussed before now. Analyze it with this. Integrated with this. Your being must support synthesis, making of all elements. Your being must support human spirit. Your being must enhance two relationships, humans to humans and humans to earth at the same time. So, I leave you with this much for now and we'll take it further, further analysis and further podcasts. Have a good night.